so containers. Everyone thinks is this magic black box that allow you to run any software on your machine without breaking things most of the time. That is a whole new setup living in your current system. But no, that's just a VM. Well, sort of. So I built one from scratch to explain how the containers actually work. First, I did some research on how to create containers from scratch in C. Since I use Zig, it seemed like a safe play to go for it and found nothing. All I got were projects like Shroot, BRAP and Containerd documented, but not actually how to build one. An actual tutorial seemed too raw and complex for my TikTok brain to understand it. <laughs> On the search for how to create a container, I found this video where this lady was creating a container using Go. So I decided that I would follow the instructions of the video and just adapt it to the context. While I was watching the video, I noticed that this lady was using syscalls. Syscalls or system calls are basically computer services that you can request from the kernel to perform an action like reading and writing to a file. One of which that caught my attention was the clone syscall. So clone works by creating a new process in your computer and share resources with the caller depending on the flags that you pass to it. Meaning your process is only allowed to share what you specify. Some of the flags for the container are new OTS, new process ID, new namespace, and SIG child. In the syscall, there are three main arguments, which are function, uh, function pointer. This is the process that will be executed in the clone syscall the stack a pointer to a stack which is the necessary memory for the process the flags which are the resources that are allowed to be shared during the process and there's actually a fourth argument which is argument yeah argument which is a pointer to the arguments like this it's kind of optional and at the end you'll see why so i proceeded to wrap the clone syscall into another function which will receive the function pointer and the argument pointer okay um, then I prepared a calculated stack then I created a function that will be the process that will be running in the container and so I, I ran into three issues nothing will happen no error handling for debugging and no permissions and I'll get into that nothing will happen because i wouldn't wait for the function to finish or in this case the process to finish and i fixed that using the wait process id function i guess it's a syscall i'm not really sure the arguments will cause me a little problem because i actually didn't know what i was doing so we have a little more research I will find out that the syscall actually returned a U size, meaning that I could use it later in the function. Example, wait process ID, which will take me to the second issue. My research channel helped me realize that there was missing some error handling in the case of an invalid process ID. That that and a little casting with placeholders would allow me to use wait process id function to run any command but then finally ran into the third issue no permissions 
so I was testing this inside the docker container cause I'm actually not that stupid to fuck up my computer like that and after some bumps in the desk I wondered if this could be a permission issue and so again my research channel confirmed it and boom work in process <laughs> and so to test it out I tried doing the host name test and it was working so now that I had somewhat of a container I would still need to refine it remember the argument parameter that was kind of optional so yeah I was using it before yeah <laughs> but I figured I could use it at the time I didn't know how to pass memory around with pointers like using int from pointer and pointer from int so I adapted my code and tried using it with a argument wrapper structure so I would decode it uh, from the raw pointer and then have access to the argument wrapper and then I had the arguments necessary to run anything to my container at that point the code was good but the work was not done there was still this thing when fetching for process IDs it would echo the docker's container process IDs and not my container process IDs and also would give a lookup self error and so to top it off we will need to give its own file system and to mount slash proc after searching for a root file system I came across this program called the bootstrap it gives you a file system to play with and with the file system in hand I just needed to mount slash proc change the root file system and we got ourselves a mini container runtime in zig if you'd like to know more about it or to test it for yourself the git repo will be in the description thanks for watching